Hi, Facebook fans. Dr. P here. Um, I'm in rare form today. I'm, I'm really pumped up about this. Uh, this kind of stuff gets me fired up. I've got a lot to talk about. I'm going to be all over the place, so try to hang with me. I'm going to teach you a little chemistry, and um, hopefully a few of you can learn some things. Um, first, I want to just give you a little bit of a tour of my lab real quick, so you can see kind of what we do here, how we do it. I'm alone here today. It's Saturday. Nobody's here, so. Um, this is the GC room. This is where all the action happens. It's kind of noisy in here with all the fans and whatnot. And we have uh, three GCs in this room. We have another one on the way. This GC here is dedicated to chiral analysis, which I'll talk about maybe later or even do a special presentation on just that. Each one of these instruments is anywhere from sixty to ninety thousand dollars each. Um, this is how we break down the chemical components of the essential oils. Maybe I'll do a video um, in the future. Maybe I'll do a video about exactly how that works if you're interested. Um, today, I want to talk about. Well, my video is titled Scamazon. I'm not saying that in a, w a way to um, say anything about Amazon trying to scam you. It's not Amazon itself, but for some reason, these uh, what I call essential oil scammers like to sell their wares on Amazon. It's an easy uh, outlet for them, and a lot of them hang out there. So today, in particular, I'm going to talk to you about some lavender oil from a few different vendors who are very, very popular on, on, on Amazon. Um, if, you, uh, if you did a search on Amazon, you'll see, well, I'll, I'll talk about like who's the top rated ones, but these are some of the top rated ones. But before I get into that, I want to teach you a little bit about chemistry, about how we know these things are adulterated with synthetics, okay? And since we're tip, talking specifically today about lavender, I'm going to focus on some of the easy marks uh, to look at uh, when you're looking at an, a, a lavender analysis and to, de to determine if it's adulterated with synthetic. Before we get into the actual analysis of the company lavender, I want to give you a little bit of background. Two of the most important chemicals in lavender oil, and yes, essential oils are a collection of chemicals uh, organic chemicals, um, volatile organic chem chemicals, okay? And these chemicals can be made, a lot of them can be made synthetically. Some of them are not available synthetically yet, but a lot of them are. In lavender, the two most important chemicals are linalool and linalyl acetate, okay? Linalool is a monoterpene alcohol, Linalyl acetate is a monoterpene ester. It's the, basically the esterified uh, form of linalool. Um, when these, these are uh, the synthetic versions of these two components that we have for reference samples in the lab. When these chemicals are made synthetically, they leave behind marker peaks, okay? Small trace markers that give them away uh, when they're made synthetically because the plant does not make these small marker, it, it, they don't exist in nature. So let's look at, for example, linalool. This is an analysis of synthetic linalool, which you can see there's one large peak because it is almost all linalool. However, when it's made synthetically, you see, it leaves behind a lot of these little trace impurities and these trace impurities can be used to mark the source of that particular chemical okay for example in linalool when it's made synthetically from petrochemicals it always leaves behind this little uh, trace marker peak called dihydrolinalool and you can see it's about 1% in the linalool. Uh, this component, dihydrolinalool, does not exist anywhere in nature. 
So if we see this in a lavender oil, we know that it's been cut with synthetic linalool, okay? The GC, a regular GC, cannot determine whether the linalool came from a synthetic source or a natural source, but it can see these trace marker peaks that are a dead giveaway of the source, okay? So if the pure synthetic linalool has 1% of dihydrolinalool, then we can estimate how much of synthetic linalool has been added to the lavender oil, okay? Likewise, this is a sample of linalool acetate. The analysis, again, mainly one large peak due to the linalool acetate. But again, the trace marker peak, dihydrolinalool acetate, again, at around 1%, a little above 1%. Uh, dead giveaway, this component does not get, exist in nature. So if we see this in a lavender uh, analysis, we know that it's been cut with synthetic linalool. And we can estimate the percentage based upon the percentage of this in the final lavender analysis. All right, so this brings me to the first big Amazon scammer that uh, millions of people are buying from that claims to have 100% uh, pure essential oil, this Rada Beauty. Okay, uh, and it's not just their lavender, but today I'm just talking about lavender, so I'm going to focus on the lavender analysis. Look at it 100% pure and natural Bulgarian lavender essential oil, premium therapeutic grade. Okay, if you, I mean, anyone with any experience with essential oils, I'm telling you, can just smell this thing and you can know right off the bat it does not smell like lavender. Um, and if you're not that experienced, then you might think, oh, well, this could be lavender. But this four ounce bottle sells for like $12.95. And it is almost all synthetic or and or uh, compounded with chemicals from a natural source, but mainly it's synthetic linalool and synthetic linalool acetate, as we'll see here from the analysis. Okay, let's look at this. This is the analysis of the Rada, Rada Beauty Lavender, okay? As you can see here, dihydrolinalool at 0.25%. Dihydrolinalool acetate, 0.48%. These are components that do not exist in nature, okay? So this has about 25% synthetic linalool and about 40-something 40, 40 percent uh, synthetic linalool acetate. So let's say 65 to 70 percent total synthetic composition in this oil. Maybe more, well actually probably more, but at least that. Um, it does actually have some probably lavender oil in it as you can, this peak here, lavendulil acetate, very small amount, 0.35 in true Bulgarian uh, lavender, this peak would be about 3.5% or 3.5 to 4%. Um, so this oil may have about 10% lavender or lavendin in it, let's say, probably lavendin because it's cheaper. And there is a substantial amount of sinol and camphor and borneol, which should all be under 1% in a true lavender oil. And so it's probably a lavendin base with 10 to 15 percent lavendin, let's say, and the rest are chemicals. Now, this oil, like I said, does not smell anything like true lavender, but people are uneducated as to what true lavender smells like, so they think this is real lavender when they or they want to believe it is because it's such a great price. But you you're not going to get pure lavender oil on the market, you know, in these kind of small quantities, four ounces for 12, 13 bucks. You're just not going to get it. Okay, that's the Rada. Interestingly enough, um, another big Amazon seller known as uh, Art Naturals um, is also selling basically, I think it has to be from the same source. 
um, if you look at the analysis, we see about the same thing here. Again, uh, the 24, 25% synthetic lavender, or synthetic uh, linalool, uh, around 40, so 40, close to 40% lavender, uh, sorry, 40 to 50% uh, linalyl acetate because of the dihydro linalyl acetate. And again, about 10% of some natural lavender or lavender, uh, most likely lavender. Again, smells pretty, pretty much exactly like the Rada Beauty. And also, I would point out that these analysis reports pretty much match the synthetic lavender that was that I did the uh, expose on in, in Walmart selling for three dollars and ninety seven cents uh, for a fifteen mo bottle by uh, Sensationals slash Rimport. Same. It looks like it all came from the same supplier. Okay, that's that. Now we also have this other big Amazon brand here known as Majestic Pure. Now they took a little bit of a different twist on their uh, lavender compound. Uh, again, we do see the uh, dihydrolinolol at around the same percentage, so it's around 25% synthetic linolol, and we also see the um, dihydrolinolol acetate, maybe a little less, 35 to 40%. Uh, but it's this thing's got other stuff in it. I don't know. It's got a little bit of some maybe some peppermint from some menthol. I don't know why that's in there. Carvone maybe from spearmint. Uh, but here's the big thing: coumarin. When you smell this thing, it ha it's so sweet because of this massive amount of coumarin, almost two percent coumarin. Coumarin is a carcinogen used in the fragrance industry um, for a sweet. It's an intensely sweet aroma. It doesn't take very much at all for you to smell. I can smell coumarin in an oil at 0.1% or less. Uh, this has almost 2%, and it's sickening sweet. This smells nothing like lavender. And again, coumarin is a carcinogen. This, you know, no one would ever want to use this as a lavender um, because of the toxicity i mean i would just be scared to use this in any way shape or form whether aromatically uh, or any other fashion um but you know this is the kind of thing that's being sold out there again as 100 percent pure authentic therapeutic grade cashmere lavender ridiculous total complete garbage so um I hope this, you know, maybe brings a little more understanding to about um, how we determine things like this that are going on. This isn't just, uh, you know, we feel like it's adulterated, you know, so we, we think it is because we smell it or whatever. No, this is actual um, chemistry, science. We know this without any shadow of a doubt that this is going on, okay? And we can prove it in a court if necessary. But you now I have I have testified in court and, uh, for various different cases, and I'll do it again if need be, because this stuff has to stop. These these cheap um, fragrance compounds that are being sold as essential oils are giving the industry a bad name, and they are um, undercutting the companies that are selling good quality essential oils spending the money to to have them analyzed every lot to make sure they're authentic and they can't compete with this garbage that could potentially injure people because of the way that they have been taught to use them you know maybe improperly um which i don't agree with a, a lot of the of the way that some companies teach their people to use essential oils but that doesn't change the fact that that's going to happen. So I'm not saying that Amazon, there you can't get any pure essential oils on Amazon. But the only case that I would, you know, I would never order an essential oil on Amazon. I just wouldn't do it. You know, I w and I would never buy one at Walmart. 
it's for the same reason I just I wouldn't go to McDonald's for a filet mignon. It's just not what I would do. There's just too much risk because the majority of the stuff sold on Amazon, eBay, or in department stores like Walmart, big stores like that, the majority of the product sold there is adulterated, okay? There's just, that is a fact. That doesn't mean there aren't some um, actual valid oils that are sold on Amazon, but it, those cases typically are when the actual reputable company it has an Amazon store. Why they do this, I don't know, um, but it, it happens, okay? Um, for example, let me turn this around. Here is an example. Again, oh, first of all, here, um, these are the, the top sellers. If you did a search on Amazon for best sellers, you'd see, you know, Rada Beauty's up there, um, what is this? Healing Solutions. They, I've exposed them several times. They're selling garbage. Majestic Pure. Art Natural will be another one. Anyway, among all these scammers, there are actual companies that are selling on Amazon who um, are reputable companies who actually do the analysis on the world. For example, here's one. Uh, Eden's Garden. They have a store on Amazon. Why? I don't know. Again, it's a mystery to me. There may, must be a business, but it doesn't make any sense to me why a consumer would buy the oil from a reputable company on Amazon as opposed to the website, especially when a lot of times, uh, for one, you don't get any info about the product. You don't get the analysis reports or anything like that. But if you go to the actual website, look, notice here. This, this is $18.95 for 10 ml of frankincense oil. But if you go to the company's actual website, it's $14.95. Now, why would you buy it from Amazon when you can get it cheaper from the website? And if you go to the website, you can go and you can see, you know, a lot more and more companies are starting to do this. The good companies, they will give you the actual GCMS report for that oil. Boom, there it is. Hey, guess who did this one? <laughs> I'm not just saying this because I did it, but I'll show you another one. Again, cheaper to buy it from the site. And I personally would feel more confident buying from the site of the supplier rather than Amazon. But that's just me. Um, let's take another company. Plant Therapy. <clears throat> Same price, $14.95. Also, you can go to their site and you can see they also have an Amazon store. And you can go to their site, though, and you can get the analysis report. I didn't do this analysis report. I've never done, they've never paid me for analysis. I'm showing you this because, and you know, there are some other companies out there that can do analysis. These companies, this one, also specializes in uh, essential oil analysis. They know what they're doing. There are basically about four to five companies worldwide that really know what they're doing on essential oils. Um, but why? Why are these companies selling on Amazon? Tell somebody tell me. I don't know why. Um, Cause I don't know. Price is the same. On this in this particular case, I think the price is the same. But um, it just it, I don't know. Maybe there's some business reason. Maybe they need the exposure. They want the exposure on Amazon because a lot of people search on Amazon. But again, I would not sell on Amazon. If I were a vendor, I wouldn't sell on Amazon. To me, it would seem like it would dilute the name and again i've never done business i don't analyze oils for plant therapy and i'm telling you oh, here's another another lab here uh phytochemia another lab this is in canada you know they don't use me i'm not trying to promote anybody here um these are good and, uh, and these are these other labs are cheaper than me so you know i have enough business to keep me busy you know people i don't care about people using these other labs there are there are a few good ones out there and just to show you I don't even care about companies I don't care who you use I, I literally do not care um, as I just don't want people buying fragrance oils and thinking they're essential oils I care about this industry uh, I care about quality oils and I care about people knowing what quality oils are and I don't want these scammers to to, to uh, cheat you um, this company here just to show you, I'm not trying to promote anybody. 
this company here, Nature's Gift. The lady that owns this place literally hates my guts. She hates me, okay? I'm, I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. But she doesn't sell, uh, she's not a scammer. I would rather you buy from this person than, than uh, stuff on Amazon that's fake. But again, I'm being as front as I can with you with these companies. That, again, in the case of Nature's Gift, that, if I were on fire, that lady would not walk across the street to pee on me. I, I just, but I don't care who you buy from. I really just do, don't care. As long as you're not buying fake essential oils, fragrances that are sold as essential oils. People think I'm crazy for saying this, but it's true. I really, I just don't care. But let's go on to the next thing. There, there's, there's many, 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 many people out there who think that they're getting a pure product when they buy on Amazon. They think, oh, you know, they call it essential oil. It must be an essential oil. You just have to be a little bit more diligent. You have to um, find companies that are giving you a GCMS analysis report that is batch specific, okay? It should have a lot number on the analysis report. It should be from a third party, not, and it should be um, from a lab who actually knows how to analyze essential oils. <clears throat> if the company is showing you a report from XYZ environmental labs, you might as well just throw that report in the trash. It's going to mean nothing. They cannot, these labs do not know how to analyze essential oils. They can show you the, you know, the major peaks in the oil, um, but they don't know the finer points of essential oil analysis. They don't know how to tell you, um, you know, like what I just showed you with trace marker analysis, which that one's a very common one. A lot of people know about dihydrolinol, dihydrolinol state, but even they miss those. These, these kind of labs, they miss the simple stuff. So it means nothing if it doesn't come from a lab who specializes only in essential oil or similar aromatic product analysis, right? So don't be taken by just any analysis report. Also, look at the report. <clears throat> the report should have a date on it. It should have a lot number on it. The lot number should match the lot number on the bottle you're buying. And if you don't have that, the, the, the analysis report has been tampered with, and we see that a lot. Uh, Healing Solutions, I've exposed them for tampering with analysis reports. They paid me to do some analysis reports for them one time and then thought they were going to just use those reports over and over again to represent every lot they sold after that. And so I raised a big uh, ruckus about it, and they finally took my reports off their site. But they're still using the reports from two other labs, which apparently don't care if their reports are misused because you can see there's no date on the report and those reports are probably a couple years old. A report should never be more than a year old. There's no re any a reputable seller who's selling decent amount of quantity is not going to have the same lot of oil for more than a year. It just doesn't happen. So if you see a report and it's over a year old, it's likely that that report is not the actual report of the oil that they're selling. So be aware of that. Um, I think uh, I've covered just about every bit of, the, of what I want to cover today because there's so much to cover. I'm going to do future videos on this stuff, other oils, but I just wanted to focus on lavender oil because it's such a big oil, and I wanted to give, some people, give people some tips on how to recognize uh, fakes and how we do it in the lab, and so maybe, um, maybe you know a little bit more about the chemistry behind it today. Uh, some people seem to learn better. Uh, by a video format than just a post. But I am gonna post um, all this stuff. I'm gonna post uh, the actual detailed results from each one of these vendors um, so that you can have uh, something to share to warn your friends and family <clears throat> about to not buy these kind of oils, okay? Because they're not essential oils. They're not essential oils. These are fragrance oils and should never be called essential oils because they're mainly synthetic. And not that I'm, you know, I, I under, I'm a chemist, so yes, molecules can be made synthetically, 
that are the same as in nature if they're the same molecule. But when, for example, linalool and linalool acetate are made synthetically, they're not the same because one of the impurities, but two, uh, we haven't talked about this, but there's uh, there's the natrimeric forms of these molecules. So there's an L and a D form for both of these uh, molecules. And these are like the right hand and left hand versions of these molecules. When they're made synthetically from petrochemicals, like in, these ca in this case, um, you get a 50-50 mixture of the L and D form, okay? Lavender oil only produces 99% plus of the L form on both of those, or 98 to 99%, depending on little when I last state. I don't want to get into too much detail here to confuse you, but it's all pretty much the L form of those molecules. And, you know, that makes a difference, the, the stereochemistry. You know, you may have remembered stories in years past about the wrong anatomic form of amino acids that injured or even killed people because our bodies use um, all L amino acids and um, some synthetic forms got into the uh, supplements and whatnot, which were 50-50 mixture of D and L, and uh, that could be a big problem. And so in, in a, lot of, a lot of times, one form is completely useless and just pissed out. Um, but in the worst case scenarios, it can actually be toxic or you know, even life-threatening if it's the wrong enantiomer. Um, so that's something to be always be cognizant of is, is that the synthetic, form, the synthetic routes to making these things is not, does not often give you the same enantiomeric ratio that you get when the plant makes it. So I hope that's clear. If not, we'll, we're going to talk more about that in future videos. But um, just wanted to give you uh, an, another uh, update on what what's going on here, and uh, I hope that people will really take it seriously, and um, you know look for vendors who are reputable, who give you the reports, and who are doing lot specific testing from third parties. There's several of them out there. It doesn't have to be from my lab. It could be from uh, a couple other labs um, that are well known, Phytochemia and the other guy in France, and there's a few others. But just make sure of that, and, and then it's a lab that specializes in testing essential oils and not just a general lab. I think that's all for today. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something. Um, please like and share it, and uh, as well as my page. I hope that um, you'll join me in the future. Thanks a lot, everybody.